All of you can unmute. Fast, fast. All of you can unmute fast. And then say, Yes, you can. Louder. Yes, you, yes, you, you can. can. Louder, not enough. Yes. I'm not hearing. Yes, I'm old you man. Can. yes, you can. can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. So welcome, yes, you welcome, you welcome. Sister, welcome. Professor, thank you, Dr. thank you, Elizabeth, thank onto stage, please. Thank yeah. you, thank you so much, uh, Professor Dr. T P S from India, my wonderful, <laughs> wonderful lifetime mentor. Thank you so much, sir, for giving me the opportunity to come and address our great leaders. I won't call you students because, as I can see, you are preparing yourself to become an effective leader. One of the reasons why you are studying or teaching is because you are imparting or you are preparing to impart into other people's lives and add value, add value to any organization that you will be working with for and add value to yourself and add value to others. I love this very important topic, but before I move on, it is my custom to appreciate all our great leaders on this platform. I can only acknowledge those that open their camera. Sorry about that. But let me start with my professor, Dr. TPS that we've been working together for the past three to four years now. I've learned a lot. The only thing that still remains for me to learn is the, uh, the language, which I believe that is still part of my agenda to learn the language. I know you have so many languages in India, but I'll pro probably pick up the one that uh, Professor TPS is speaking, and then I'll be able to travel along with him to some of our office program in India, Bangladesh, um, Pakistan, and all other Asian country. So I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Without wasting time, I would like to say, if I don't pronounce your name properly, just forgive me. I'm still in the process of learning. I'm a learner and I learn every day because learning is my lifestyle and learning is living. As a leader, you need to keep learning. Getting your degree in university colleges is not enough. It's just the preparation. You have to learn more and more to become an effective leader. So Ambly, Ambishek, thank you for joining us. Abdi, thank you for joining us. Afzak, thank you for joining us. Sarah, thank you for joining us. Z uh, that is not the name, but it's a Xiaomi. Thank you for joining us, Safa. Thank you for joining us. Nadi, thank you for joining us. Uh, Bina, thank you for joining us. Uh, Janet, Matthew, thank you for joining us. Uh, Re Redmi, thank you for joining us. Uh, Remy, thank you for joining us. Da Tony, thank you for joining us. Gerald Joyce, thank you for joining us. Sharif, thank you for joining us and many, many more that have joined us this morning. I appreciate you all, especially those that have not opened their camera. Okay, guess what topic that I've been given to dive on this morning? Coming confidence, building confidence in communication. Very, very important. Like I said right from the beginning that we are all students or some of you are teachers and we are learning every day. You've been there for probably four years, three years, two years, studying, gaining your first degree, your second degree and your third degree. But then that is just the beginning. Remember the, 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 the theme of this is what next after the college is the beginning of life is preparing yourself. You've just prepared yourself to go into the world. The only thing that will sustain every one of you is when you build your communication skills. And while you are building your communication skills, you are also building your confidence. It's just like, apart from one or two reasons why many of you are not opening your camera this morning, it could be may reason why 
you are not hoping your camera is because you are too shy. But I want to believe that before the end of this program today, you'll be bold enough to take up and control your lives and nothing else. What will people say? I don't even know how I look. Maybe I'm looking ugly or not. I don't know how I can't speak English. I'm too shy to be in front of people or be in the crowd. I'm too shy to be in the gathering of people, especially on social media. It could be that's one of your reasons. But like my professor has said, it's about time that you build yourself or build your confidence. Let me start with this statement. I was like you before for many years, too shy to speak. I had the opportunity to be a leader, but then I'm too shy to add to what has been discussed on the table. Even some of other people, other leaders, we say exactly what is in my mind to say and I'm destroying myself. I am frustrated because I can't contribute. Why? Because I'm too shy. I'm too timid, timid, and I'm afraid. For many years, I could not take my position as a leader because if you can't express yourself, people will not know who you are. And so while I was still building myself up. I didn't go to the secular education up to, I got to 40 something years. But within that period, I was building myself by studying, home studying while I'm taking care of my family, reading books, going to the library with my children, studying, reading, also researching, even before I even get any degree course. So by the time I now build myself up to be bold enough, then that was the time I wrote a book on Yes, You Can. Because that book reveals me or introduces me to the world. Immediately I say, yes, I can do it. That's why the fact of the negativity that I've surrounded myself with Despite the fact that people don't believe I can do it, they say it's right in front of you. They say it, they even condemn you, neglect you. They criticize you. I'm sure some of you have been in that position. Even our teachers can even say, just because you didn't meet up at that very time, they can tell you, oh no, you can't really pass this test. You can't pass this. You can't move on. You can't progress. Even your sometimes your parents, maybe they have one or two siblings of yours that are very brilliant. They reluctantly focus on you and just focusing on the brilliant ones. And at the, end of, at the same time, you are trying to please them. You're trying to please people. You're struggling. You're working hard. That's who I am. That's who I was before. So when they tell you to shut up, go and sit down somewhere, you don't know anything, how do you feel? When you say that uh, there's nothing in your brain, how do you feel? This contributed to uh, me having a very low esteem. This contributes to me not having enough confidence to face the world. But you have to make a decision. I made that decision. That enough is enough. After 30 years of letting their opinions, their critics, held me back, stopped me, limited me not to do anything. The only thing I think of is being an housewife, housemaid, mother of my children, wife to my husband, tidying up the house. But within that period, I changed the scenario and I challenged everything they've said I can't do. And how will you do that? By breaking free from that barrier, 
breaking the chain. Come out of your comfort zone. But that is not enough until you see somebody else that can change the scenario as well. Believe in you. And saying it to yourself, Elizabeth, do you know you can write a book? I've been dreaming to write a book for 30 good years. I've been dreaming to become a leader. I've been dreaming to go to school to challenge people that that moment I might be struggling, but then I can still become and I can still achieve. And at the age of 45, and now after building myself up, reading, we reading uh, books from with my children, going to this library, studying, I made a serious decision of my life that I want to and I will. I'm going to make this decision. I enrolled myself into the college at the age of 45. I said, if it's going to be, it's up to me to challenge what they said I can do. In this place, I have run so many businesses, but I still want to go to school. I make money. Yes, I still want, because I just want to break free from that. I can't do. Because this is what every one of us are going through. You can do better than this, you know, because you have greatness in you. You are created to solve problems. You are created to serve. You are created to be a leader. But you have to develop the leader that is in you. So that you don't limit yourself. So I enrolled. I did my first test. And guess what? The person that didn't even have a GCSE. Not even from Africa, I don't have YEC or GC. Sarah, I can testify on that. Came to this country, I don't have anything. And I'm dreaming I want to work in the office. I'm dreaming I want to be a leader. Came to this office where even my English is not good enough. <laughs> and then people are telling you, just go up, go and I mean go and do cleaning job. Because that is the only thing they think I can do. Well, I started with cleaning job because I'm a still an immigrant, even though I was born here, but I left the country for a few years. So I started with that, but I never put myself down. So I started enrolling and doing some short, short courses, like how to type, how to do this design and everything. I started building many skills and doing trading in the market. So when I went for this interview, after the interview, the lecturer told me, what have you been doing for many years that you didn't study? So I mentioned it. He said, because what you just presented to us now is excellent. I said, thank you so much. So I started developing. Then how did I get my job? I got my job because I built my confidence within that period I didn't go to school to change the scenario of just going for a circular job before you can gain experience. I went with that interview and I said to them, yes, you might not understand what I'm going to say, but it is truth. I don't have a circular working experience, but I have the one that is greater than that and how they ask me. As a housewife and as a mother, I'll gain experience of multi-tax. I can be cooking and at the same time, I can be taking care of the children. I build team working because I'm working with a team of husband and children. I manage finances because when my husband gives me the money for, for, the, for the housekeep, I know how to channel it and to use it wisely. When I finished that interview that day, guess what? In United Kingdom, I got my first job. What got me there is the confidence 
of who I am that I have expressed to this interview panel. And, if, and from cleaning job to become desktop publisher administrator is the confidence and how to express yourself. The person, the lady you are seeing in front of you, after six years of studying, gained my first degree in business management, upper class, and University of Northampton. Why? Because I know who I am. Because I changed the scenario. Because I know my purpose. Because I build the communication skills to that level and build my confidence. That is my story. Right, now I want to share with you <laughs> about this communication and building your confidence. So what are the good communication skills then? Because... Like I said, your degree, your college certificates is the beginning. It's not the end. It's just the tools for you to work on. Either you are an engineer or you are a lawyer. It's just the tools, whatever you've got. Like my professor will say, it's, an, it's a theory. Theory alone cannot survive you. Theory or principles or instructions or informations, some of them might be cheap and some of them might be free. Just like as you are sitting in front of me here now. But what will make you succeed in life is when you apply what you've learned. So, Effective communication requires us to be clear and complete in what we are trying to express. Being an effective communicator in our professional and personal lives, lives involves learning the skills to exchange information with clarity, empathy, and understanding. There's no point for me to have Professor TPS as my lifetime mentor if I can't understand him at all. He knows I don't understand the language at the moment, but he have to speak English for me to understand because he's expressing himself, sharing his wisdom and experience and knowledge and he has to do it in a way that I understand. And I've grown. I've learned a lot for three to four years. That is how important it is with our communication skills. So apart from whatever you've learned, if you have not think of developing your communication skills, I want to encourage you to do that. You can go extra lens, extra lens to learn more than what is being taught on the class. If you're an engineer, you don't want to be carrying away, carry along with your certificate of MC, um, B, BCB, SC, or professor, but you want to apply it. That is the main thing. And one of the things to apply what you've learned is your through your communication. Because if you can express yourself, you've done greater work with yourself and with others. If people that you are working with can understand you clearly, you've done a good job. So that is why I said that effective communication requires us to be more clearer and to be more simple for others to understand why because we are all not in the same level you might be you are in the same class but we are not the same level we are all different so that is the more reason why we need to do that 
Let me also tell you something. Just like Dr. Julie Connor said, who you are, define your purpose. Do you know who you are at all? Because who you are, we gives you the confidence of what you are doing. So if you don't know who you are, you don't know your ability, you don't know your strength and your weakness, you need to assess that. Because this is the power behind your success. So as uh, Julie Connor said, a personal purpose statement defines who you are. It reflects your passion and value. It provides clarity as you set your goals for your future. So if you don't know who you are, yes, sometimes, let me also tell you this, that sometimes you don't even know the reason why you choose that career. You can disagree with that with me. Majority enroll themselves with this particular subject because of the influence of friends and even pressure from our parents. Maybe they want you to become an engineer. Maybe they want you to become a doctor. And because they are the ones sponsoring you, you have no choice than to go by it. But it might be opposite of your purpose. Your purpose determines the solution you are bringing to the table. You might be studying law and your ability, your strengths, we can only derive from becoming an engineer. You might be the doctor, but then you are a creative, a creator person. So if you don't know who you are, you might be in a wrong career. So purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or which something exists and it tends to do something or attend to tax or assignment given to you. Another word for purpose is your aim. What's your aim? What's your reason? Where's your why? What's your desire? Your dreams, your intention. You don't want to waste 10 years in university, colleges, secondary school, only to realize that that is not your purpose. Because once you know your purpose, then you'll be able to build confidence right from there. Because I will not come here to tell you that there is no challenges. Every career you have chosen, there is always challenge. And the only way for you to overcome that challenge, one of the reasons is for you to know who you are, your purpose, your why. So I just I think I should move that one also. How do you communicate with confidence? Remember, that is our topic for today. Be prepared. While you are studying, you also need to prepare. Like I said, all your knowledge in classroom, you have to apply it. You have to use it to face the world. So be prepared. So maybe within this period, I know in UK, our, the A-levels result has come out and O-levels result has just come out, I think. And within the period of August and September, October, some of them will be having fun, holiday. <laughs> Why don't you use that time to, you know, encourage yourself to study more about the course that you've studied or even study more on communication skills. Because the more you prepare yourself, the better it will be. Even with interview, to get a job, to get a contract, to start a business. Because if you can communicate effectively with boldness, people will trust and believe in you. 
That's why you will see that thousands of people we apply, thousands of people we graduate, and only 10% got a job. Where is their confidence? Because when you go for interview, that is what they are watching. Remember my own story. I might not have a degree. In fact, my first job, I don't even have anything. I don't have a level. <laughs> I don't have a degree, my first job. But I went there with confidence, expressing myself the way I know. So you prepared. Then think about your message. What do you want to put across the world? What do you want people to know about? I mean, like Professor TPS said right from the beginning, is even encouraging you to say, yes, you can. Maybe you can even sing this song like I always sing. I can. I can do it. I can achieve it. I can. You know. So what's your message to the world? Because your message will also bring your uniqueness. So it is very important that you know what message you want to put across, what you want to express people. And also you need to build so many skills around that message. I mean, skills like um, persuasive skills, expressing yourself, willingness to want to listen to others, assertive with your with your message believe in yourself even your mindset what's the information you stole there cuz mindset is everything like me a professor tps we know that i always say that you can have a whole degree or if your mindset is opposite what you've learned you just wasted your time I was joking with somebody recently. I said, if you study economics, economics is for you to come and bring solution to our economics problem in the world, in our society, in organization. And then you have a mindset of corruption. Tell me, you've just wasted 10 years of your study in economy. <laughs> you just wasted your time. Because tell me, you make yourself now an illiterate that doesn't know anything if your mindset is corrupted. So it's very important. Also, beware of your body language. If you want to communicate effectively and you want people to trust you, like when you go for interview or you're working with a firm or being a leader somewhere, or even saying, you know, preparing for, for you to get a contract or business somewhere. Body language is more. It's a form of communication. Imagine if I want to become a director of an organization and I went to an interview. This time they're not looking at dressing up anyway, it's this time, but then you need to be smart. And then the way you are talking, they are not only looking at the words that is coming out of your mouth. They are looking at the way you are expressing yourself in a body language. So they are looking at you, they are listening to you, and they are looking at the way you portray yourself. Because you might be saying something, because it's so easy for you to download so many information and, you know, and then be... Uh, uh, how do you call it, you know? <laughs> and just be re reading yourself, reading what you've downloaded. <laughs> I can come here now and show you the slides and be reading only the slides. No. They want to see your confidence. They don't want somebody being a director and doesn't know his left and right. And that is why they are looking at you. They are listening to you and they are looking the way you are speaking and they are also looking the way you are portraying yourself. So body language can also speak opposite of what you are saying. And that is to just to tell you that sometimes you can cram everything 
and download it and offload it and still not suitable for the job. And you are wondering, I've answered all their questions. I give them everything. But still, they didn't call me, you know, they didn't select me to come and work with them. Maybe that is what you need to check on, your body language. The reason why they call you for interview is nothing than just to see your confidence, how you express yourself. They've seen your certificates. Yes, they selected you to come for the interview. It's another level. It's not about your certificate anymore. It's about you and how you are presenting yourself. That is why confidence is very important in communication. So what is the full meaning of confidence? Having strong belief or full assurance, sure, confidence of fulfillment. I mean, be, believing in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will believe you. So you need to believe that, yes, you can do it. You need to believe that, yes, you can add value. You need to believe that, yes, you can fill that position. You need to believe that, yes, you can answer that questions and solve those problems. Because the main reason why they employ you or trusted you to give you the contract for that business is because they trust you that you can do it. But you need to believe in yourself first before they can believe in you. Learn from others. But before then, you need to learn from your own mistakes, your failures. Because some people shy away from failing. I remember in the olden days, not, I'm not too old, but at least in my younger age, when our parents would just be instilling us, you must not fail, you must not fail, you have to pass, you have to pass. But in my own journey of life now, I've come to realize that failure is just an attempt, it's the sign of attempt that you, I mean, that you make, sign that you make an attempt. And if you believe in yourself, you can do it again. Again and again and again, and you can pass it. Some of these leaders, all these leaders you are seeing, those leaders you are emulating, those leaders you are loving and caring and admiring, they failed several, several times. I told you my, 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 my stories right from the, the beginning of this. When I feel, 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 obviously your parents will be tired of your failure. So they will switch their attention to somebody else because they don't want to waste their money or time. But failure is just an attempt. It's good to fail because when you fail and you know that failure is part of life and you learn more from your failures, you will become a successful person in life. Failure is just an eye opener of you knowing the areas that you need to learn more and develop more. Like I said, there's no point going to school for six years, five years, three years, four years, and then they ask you a simple question you can't answer because you didn't understand what you've learned in schools. You didn't understand it. You either cram and then you offload and upload, uh, offload, offload, money to pass the exams or another way around. You're focusing on just getting the certificate. But certificate is not enough. I did not have certificates when I started working in the office here in UK. I didn't have any certificate. I only went, went there, went, I've, I've, you know, believe in myself, filled the form. And I went for the interview and give them the practicality of what I have achieved as a housewife. <laughs> that is confidence. And they believe me. That's what the family, remember I told you, I don't even, 
I can't speak English. And the panels, they are all English. They are all executives. But I was so bold. I have that highly confidence that I know what I am saying and I know what I am expressing today. I mean, even sometimes they will say, pardon, can you repeat yourself? I will repeat it. It doesn't matter. It's not my mother tongue language. <laughs> Remember, we are talking about confidence in communication or communication in the confidence. I can be here to be showing you slides, but that's not what you need. You need practicality. I know my mentor, I've learned a lot from my mentor. If I want to use slides, I will use slides. He knows me. If I don't want to use, I don't want to use. I just want to be me, be myself. We are talking heart to art here. You can't get this from any website or Google. <laughs> Yes, and I'm sure with my little simple way of expressing to you this morning, you can understand me. Well, there will be time for questions, so you can still ask questions. But I want you to leave this platform to understand that you are in control of your lives. But you need to believe in yourself. You need to believe that you can do it before other people believe in you. I mean, my first job was working with, uh, uh, working with uh, people, uh, uh, create, uh, working with a local government management board. And their focus is on all the exam papers for the police, the army forces, all throughout United Kingdom. So you can imagine me, coming from a kitchen, not other people's kitchen, my kitchen, my house, <laughs> with no degree, no certificate, working in that environment. In fact, to let you know, I was the only black in the whole glassy um, uh, building because they are the top, top people working in that place, directors, managers, and then found myself. It's not magic. It's because I believe in myself. It's because of my confidence and the ability to express myself and express my skills, express my, my ability, my strength. I do not let my weakness hold me back or even the opinions of others that said to me when I first came to this country, just go and do cleaning job to survive. I started with that, but sorry, I didn't stay there. So it's very important that we build our confidence. So you need to, confidence means feeling sure of yourself and your abilities. Not in an arrogant way, but in a realistic, secure way. Confidence isn't about feeling superior to anybody. No, that's not confidence. Confidence is you, yourself, building your ability. Showcase your ability, showcase your strength and express it in a clear way that others can understand. So what defines a confident person? Even that one, you can answer it to yourself now that we, we've been together for, for the past <laughs> few minutes. I believe you can define it that one yourself. What defines a confident person? Because a confident person will communicate effectively. Self-confidence is an attitude about your skills and ability. It means you accept and trust yourself and have a sense of control of your life. You know your strength, your weakness very well and have a positive view of yourself. You set realistic expectations and goals. 
communicate assertiveness and can undo criticism. That's all I, that's how we, how we, we, you know, that's how you build yourself up. That makes you a confidence. Not with amount of money you have or amount of knowledge. Yes, you have to gain knowledge. I'm not going to shy away from that. That's why I keep learning. You have to gain knowledge, but that is not the only thing. You understand? You can gain knowledge and you can be jobless. You can gain knowledge and be among the unemployed. You can gain knowledge and also do other dubious work out there. You want to tell me that those four dollars, they are not knowledgeable? They are. <laughs> they are and learning their strategies out of fraud. So they are knowledgeable. But then what you learn is what will determine what you will achieve or who you will become. And that will bring confidence. You haven't seen a somebody that is a... a uh, let me use this word, even all these corrupted minds, people. You have seen them so bold. Bold for nothing. Bold and have confidence to cheat. That's not what we want. To cheat others. To mismanage the resources being given to them. That's not confidence I'm talking about but to make life better for yourself and for others and to be able to express it and communicate it with others effectively that makes you a confident person very important we have identified seven types of confidence we have respect we have vision, we have track records, openness, authenticity, consistency, and also simplicity. If you want me to repeat that, I will repeat it again because I might not be able to express, but really everything I've said right from the beginning, you will gain all this that I'm, I mean, all these points. You can pick it up from all those stories of myself. Respect. You need to respect yourself and respect others. All times. You need to have a vision. Clear vision. You need to have a track record. You assess it and see where you can improve yourself and progress. You need to be open. Like we are opening to one another here. I don't have any uh, any uh, hidden agenda. I'm expressing my mind out to you. Why? Because myself and my mentor, Professor TPS, want you to succeed in life. So that's why we can use our life as an example. You cannot buy experience, but you can buy knowledge. And wisdom comes from experience. Because if you can experience some things in life, then you will know how to be wise to take actions as you continue with your journey of life. So let me repeat it again. Respect, track records, openness, authenticity, consistency, and simplicity. In fact, my own strength comes from consistency. I believe Professor TPS can testify that. For the past three years or more than that, I've been consistent in building, consistent in building YYCI, consistent in um, helping others to build themselves up, to build their leadership up, to build their skills up. I've been consistently doing the masterclass of consist. In fact, my mentor always reminds me of the previous videos he has recorded from previous events or master classes. And when I look at it, I can see the level of my consistency. 
doing it every day, even with the color of the flyer, <laughs> the set of speakers, the time we are starting, and many more. Consistency, build confidence. Even if these the little things you know, you've learned from your college, from your university, when you consistently learning more, consistently gaining, researching, applying, will become experts. Remember, there is no perfection. No one is perfect. But we can become better by consistently doing it. I look at the way um, this plane that we're flying, I don't know if some of you flies from one um, town to another town, from one country to another country. And I concluded that said that not the very day that the person invents this plane that was successful. I'm sure he must have done try and error, try and error. I'm sure he must have failed several times. There will be the time that he maybe build it up and it looks like it's not working properly and he have to redo it again or rebuild it again. But you never give up. But you consistently build it. Consistent. And that is what we are talking about if you want to build your confidence. I'm sure when I started YYCI three to four years ago, I wasn't as calm as this. I'm sure Professor TPS can testify that. I wasn't. But I can guarantee that even though I haven't achieved much, but the level I am now is different from the level I was when I first started. So consistent is the key word to build your confidence in communication. Some of us, we are shy. We don't want to speak because we don't know English. English is not our mother tongue, but we can learn it if we want to go global. If we want to go global, if we want to be working internationally and connect with others outside our people, our uh, our our people, uh, whatever they call it, yeah, then you need to learn common language. If I don't understand, I mean, I don't, for example, I don't understand Professor TPS language now. He doesn't have, because I'm originated from Africa. We speak Yoruba. He doesn't even understand Yoruba. We, we have a clue of that. But what brought us together to work together effectively within three to four years is a common language of English. How do I come out of my comfort zone? It's because I learned common ink language. How can I, how, how did I develop the place of connecting with others all over the world? From Nigeria, from India, from Philistine, from Pakistan. It's because I determined to build my common language, which is English. So the day you start shining away that, oh, I don't want to learn. Oh, I don't want to open my camera. I don't want to make mistakes. I don't want to fail. You are limiting yourself. But greatness is in you. So you need to believe in yourself and also add more value to yourself. So that is the way to go about it. So to build your confidence in communication, know who you are. Build yourself up. Prepare yourself. If you want to learn, learn as many skills that can help you, that can enhance your what you've already learned before. Very, very important. So, how does a confident person talk? <laughs> I'm sure. Before asking, you know, before saying anything about all these questions or answering these questions, you've already known. 
I'm not afraid to speak to anybody in the whole world. Yes, I might be a woman. Yes, I might not have the posh English. <laughs> yes, <laughs> my English might not be sounding like any other person. But I'm not afraid to speak to anybody in the whole world. That's the confidence. And I'm still learning. It's not just talking. But I am still building and learning every day of my life. So if I can learn, you also can learn. So how does a confident person speak? I believe you have your answer, but I will just clearly say, speak clearly. I believe I, you, all of you can hear me clearly. Confident people tend to talk slowly and clearly. No need of rushing because I am not downloading my statement. <laughs> I don't need to finish up everything I've prepared on this statement. Even if it is one statement I made and you understood it, that's it. You don't need every grammar. <laughs> So confidence tends to speak slowly and clearly because they know that what they have to say is valuable. That is the most important thing. Do you know that some people can speak for five hours and then you ask yourself, what have I gained? What is he talking about? <laughs> Whereas somebody can speak for only five minutes and you gain a lot. You gain a lot. Slow yourself down when you know yourself, when you believe in yourself, when you believe what you are saying is right, is valuable. Slow down and let others learn from you. Speak from the chest, projecting your voice so that everyone can hear. I believe that we have 43 people here. Even if all of you were not able to hear, hear me clearly, at least I can boast of at least 90% of people right in front of me, including those people that didn't open their camera. They can hear me. That is very important. So you speak naturally. Let it be your lifestyle. It's not easy. You have to develop it to get to that level. Believe in yourself. Believe in the message you are putting across. And believe that at least 90% of people listening with their attentive understanding ears will understand and hear what you've said. I don't want to delay every one of us for one hour, two hours, three hours, and then waste your time. No. Even if it is only one statement of yes, you can, is enough. That is the most important thing. So that when you leave this when you leave this webinar, you can remember statements being said. And you can also understand it. Because what you understand better is what you will apply. So better understanding is very important. If people should ask you, you've gone through this seminar for two hours, for one hour, three hours. What have you gained from that? If you are able to express yourself and say what you've gained, then you haven't wasted your time. So how will you improve confidence in communication? Boasting self-confidence through communication skills. Develop strong listening skills. Because if you are not ready to listen, you are not ready to learn. If all your listening is just for you to want to respond, 
then you are not learning. I know Professor TPS can testify this, that I always encourage all our leaders joining us for our seminars and conference. We always encourage, let's learn together. Let's share together. Don't come to the class, the platform, speak your all your grammars, your wisdom, your knowledge, and then you leave. It's communication is about give and take. You pour out and then you receive. You don't put yourself in a position of I know it all. In respect of who is on the platform. They could be younger, they could be older. But we learn from one another. So you don't go there to just speak. Or maybe you joined and somebody else is speaking and you are not paying attention to what they are saying because you just want, you are waiting for your time. So you are waiting, you are waiting. Maybe you are jotting. So now you are not learning anything. So you have to cultivate the habit of active listening. So develop strong listening skills. That is why, that's how, and not only that, when you respect others, others will respect you. When you are willing to listen to others and learn from them, automatically people will listen to you and learn from you. That's life, that's principle. So what you do to others is what others will do to you. That's automatic. So if you are there to just speak and go, then probably others also will say, let him speak, finish, and move on. It's attitude. Be willing to listen. It's part, it's part and the process of communication. Communication is not only just you speak. It's also, I mean, I've written a book and I've shared with people about active listening. You learn from others. You give others chances to listen to you and learn from you. Very important. So practice public speaking. Mastering nonverbal communication, like body language. Constructive feedback. Be willing to receive constructive feedback. And the last one, ask questions. If after your one hour, 30 minutes, of attending a seminar and you could not ask a single question, absorption, you want to assume that you know it. You want to assume that you've learned everything the person is saying. You want to assume that you've listened and you've grabbed everything. No, absorption is a killer. You will assume you know it and you know nothing. I always say to people, there are four things that limit them. First one, ignorance. Those people that don't want to listen at all. They don't go to seminars. They don't read. They don't study. They don't do anything. And they are ignorant. Ignorance kills. And some people also, it's lack of understanding. If you don't listen with your active listening, how can you understand what has been said? The third one, lack of vision. Because you don't know who you are, so you don't know your dream, you don't know your purpose, you don't know your why. Why will you have vision? And the last one is knowing who you are and your purpose. So you need to break free from everything that is limiting you and be yourself, be the best of you. In respect of the certificates and the profession you have, be yourself, be your authentic, be realistic. That is why I like Professor of TPS. That is why we are connected. It's not about anything else. It's about humanity of you. And communication is the only way to express yourself. And the way you communicate matters with boldness, with assertiveness, with confidence. How to become a more confident communicator? Like I've said before, note your body language. Listen attentively. Know your audience. 
If you don't know your audience, you might be speaking, you might be communicating with the wrong audience. The way I'm going to communicate on this platform will be different from when I'm communicating with the directors in a big company or even the people in the government or even my own wonderful youth all over the world or even the children or even my family. I will not be talking like this to my husband, no. So there's principles in communications. And also know your audience. Very important. How do I stop being shy and communicate with confidence? I think my time is up. But we just go through this. Because <laughs> I don't want to go far. I also want to listen. And I want to also um, learn from my prof my mentor. But I'll finish up with this. I have a lot to say, but you know what? Time is very precious. It's not about how long I deliver. It's about the quality of my delivery. So how are you going to stop your shyness and communicate well with confidence? Start small with people you know, your friends, your siblings, your family, your colleagues, start with that. That is why we have representatives, student representatives in colleges. We have uh, all forms of uh, clubs in schools. And we have clubs outside the school time. We have friends, start with that. The other time somebody approached me and said he, he wants to be a, a motivational speaker. He said he wants to be, in fact, the way he said it, he wants to be a special, inspirational or motivational speaker like me. I say, okay, let me ask you a question. Do you have sisters and brothers, your siblings? He was shocked. I say, start with that. Start motivating them. <laughs> then you will become... <laughs> You have to start small and then you develop. I didn't start here. 45 years ago, my first inspirational speaking was with one-to-one, -one, with a friend that was giving up with life. And I started visiting her, inviting her, inspiring her. You can start with that, with your friends. Remember, our brain works in a different way. The information we have in our mindset is different. Some people is full of negativity and they are discouraged. They are self-doubt themselves. They don't even know what to do. And here you want to become a motivational speaker or inspirational speaker. Speak to that person. Just this Monday, somebody jump in front of the train and commit suicide. Why? Because of the information that is stored in this information. But that person is a friend of somebody or a family member. So somebody must need to speak to them and inspire them and motivate them and tell them when there is life, there is hope. This can be tough, but that's not the end of life. You don't need to give up on yourself. You don't need to give up on, 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 on yourself and you don't need to give up in life. That is motivation. So if you want to be, start small. And keep going. Like I said, consistency. You know, and consistency. Yeah. Keep doing it gradually, gradually. So I've started motivating when I was a teenager. When I was alone, neglected. When I was homeless. Sleeping in the station. A railway station. I inspire people, but they don't even know what I was going through. I was uh, motivating some people. They don't know that I sleep under the tree. I was encouraging some people. They don't even know. I even came for their wedding. Dressed up the way I know. They didn't even know I was homeless. I was homeless for more than two months. But I keep on motivating, inviting, inspiring. So you can start small. Then rehearse what you say. 
You need to watch what you are saying to people. Is it negative? Is it positive? Then keep as affirming it because what you keep saying to yourself and to people, we grow. I remember when Facebook, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm among those people that started uh, uh, inspiring on Facebook many years back. So I just been telling people, it is well, you can do it, you can achieve it, you can go far. I mean, for more than 10 years, I've been doing that. So it's now part of my life. So it's not overnight. That is why we stand on transformation. And transformation, transforming your relationship, your leadership is ongoing. It's never stopped. The same thing happens to any career that you choose. You keep deep developing yourself. And the more you do it, the more you gain. I remember when I first started this, even this uh, public speaking, the person that didn't speak publicly for 30 years, it's not a joke. I cannot even face people to speak. I can't face my pastor to speak. I always keep quiet. I'm a very quiet person. And you can imagine where I am now and where I'm going. Start small and keep developing yourself. Develop your assertiveness. Learn to say no and not being guilty. And learn to be firm when you are speaking. People will respect you and trust you for that. This is where I will end this today. I'll put comma. Next time I have opportunity, I'll be right back to come and share with you. Thank you so much, sir, Professor Dr. TBS. Great, good. I think it's a great sharing of experience. <clears throat> you know how... Um, She addressed everyone. It's not students. I'm sure those who joined are all people who are leaders. There are many people who did not join because they are not ready to learn. They are ignorant. They don't want to learn. They are not interested. Probably they have thinking they have better things to do in life. All that what is mentioned by Professor Dr. Queen Elizabeth, my sister, if you look at it, it's an experience, it's from own wisdom, which is converted, or probably many people wanted to learn from that how to convert, how confident you can be from a level where you are not. It's not language. It's not your knowledge. All that can gain. You can attain all that if you have got that attitude to sit, decide, yes, I want to improve. The desire. The desire is more important. I am sure that is what is seen throughout the discussion. Very sorry. Unemployed doesn't matter. Employment will come tomorrow. Whether you don't have knowledge doesn't matter. You will get knowledge tomorrow. But the desire to learn, if that is there, you will grow from one step to another. And that is the dignity. What a great way of making it very clear. Use your time. More important. Mostly people don't use time. You get opportunities, but you don't use them. Just now also during this time, I got continuous call on most of my phones. And I am messaging that I am in the seminar. And the reply comes, I am also here. See, imagine somebody joined here and trying to call me for a very specific question which he has been bothering, whether to take computer science or electronics. That's the only thing he wanted to do. Nothing else. I'll tell you such a person who joins either in electronics or computer science is going to fail in life. You understood? 
what is more important is not the problem which is bothering me. You must know what's happening around. And that is presence of mind. That is communication. That is understanding your environment. Correct? Kept on asking. I want only this, whether to know. <laughs> and that person is seeing me online. I am talking. I am attending. I am listening. So what somebody else is talking is not listening. So what happens? After the seminar, he will think, yeah, I wasted my time because I was not listening to a lecture. It's a rare opportunity. I'll tell you, I don't generally conduct programs basically because of this reason. You see only 12 people on online. The rest of the people don't come. It's a very bad habit in India. Right. I'll tell you, I have a lot of interviews from Pakistan. People interview me. I hardly see one student or one person asking a genuine question of knowing what Dr. TPS is. No, I don't see anybody. That's why I was mentioning the other day to my sister, Professor Dr. Kuhn Elizabeth, one-to-one, -one, like an interview, people realize if somebody wanted to listen to that, it's fine. Otherwise, leave it. That listening ability, understanding others in what state they are, you know, what position they are, that's more important. That is what is presence of mind. Everybody is busy. Not that everybody has got time. I know most of the time when we conduct programs, my sister's program runs for six hours, continuous. And you know, the last minute also, she will allow the speaker to speak and then politely, diplomatically, she will say, yeah, I know that you have got much to speak. Maybe we will call another meeting another day. That immediately means it's time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> You don't tell, please stop, I want to go. Yes. She will diplomatically post it. And I'm sure as soon as the program is run, she must be carrying the bag and running for the London yes. train to catch from <laughs> somewhere else or <laughs> going for a job. And they're also punctual, no? Mm. Any program I have seen, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the program starts, the Zoom is on, waiting for people, display is on. And we have people joining from America. Midnight. Mm. You remember most of yes. the professors who are talking. Yeah. yeah. They, they are at 2 o'clock. I had programs. When it comes from Philippines, when it comes from Nigeria, when it comes from America. You know, day and night is not different. We adjust the time for people to have some dialogue. Mm. If somebody says, I don't have time, that means... They are ignorant. They don't want to learn. It's an attitude. It's not that... See, immediately when I asked for a talk, I gave two dates. Pick it up the first date. Only. See, it is not that you no know, second date. Second date, you have got few more days. Some more assignments will come. So you have to reserve a later time for somebody else. If somebody calls me, when can I talk? Immediately I will say, now. Because if I have time to answer him now, that means I am free. Mm. That means call immediately. There is no second uh, question. Delay is not there. And I am sure we may have only very less audience, but we will have very serious discussions again and again. On 31st August, we are going to have another meet in which we will have a lot of dialogues and questions. But maybe... Those who are listening so far should ask questions. I don't allow any program to run without questions. I think you can ask uh, Professor Dr. Kuhn Elizabeth, my sister, whatever questions you want. Then probably if you have something to ask me, you could ask me. Yeah. Unmute yourself and then introduce yourself and ask questions. Yeah, Sarah Samuel. Yes, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Queen Mother, for your impactful knowledge and wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. TPS. Uh, my question is concerning the building confidence. Now, you find out that you work in some organization and some situation in some institutions where you have experts. When you have experts, you have people that are knowledgeable in, in different aspects. Now, 
we that were just upcoming, the younger ones, be with their age, with their knowledge, and with their certificates, how do we how do we speak to them in a in a way that is going to be uh, meaningful and impactful without them seeing it in the way that you want to overrule them? Question, Professor TPS. <laughs> <laughs> Or you want to speak into, yes. when, you're speaking to, when you're speaking to the elders, it's like, ah, how, how dare you, the child that just come in, wants mm. to come and lecture us, we already know more than you. manage this situation for everything to be solved amicably. Thank you. Amazing. Professor TPS, can you answer the question, please? <laughs> It's it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from our own knowledge, look at it practically. Here we are on this platform. Yeah, are you listening, Ambassador Sam uh, Sarah? Thank you for that for that question. Look at it. Let's put it this way: we are in the same platform here, with a very knowledgeable professor. Knowledgeable. When I say knowledgeable. He has more than he has studied up to professor level in different languages. I mean, in different specialties or subjects. He is the king in terms of science, in terms of space, and many, many more. He's been known all over the world. He travels everywhere. Okay? Yes. And here comes a tiny young lady sitting in front of that kind of professor to speak. How will you feel? I'm throwing the question to you as well. <laughs> uh, in, in that kind of, in, in, in such situation, you'd be like anxious and uh, you just be, as you just, you can miss your words. You can even miss what, say what you don't want to even say. Okay, on this platform, I know you answered that question, but mm -hmm. do you see any traces of timidity, fear, inferiority in me this morning, facing being the same platform with Professor TPS? Did you I see got... any traces? <laughs> Did you see any traces? Okay. What I'm trying to let you know is that be yourself. Be the best of your version. Even if you are trying to bring the solution, because one thing I want you to know is that leaders are leaders, but there are different kinds of leaders. You understand? Some leaders, they are attached to purity to their leadership. Whereas some leaders, they attach transforming, inspiring others to become. So that is, we have leadership style. That's what I'm trying. I didn't want to use that uh, technical way of saying leadership style, okay? But you know what you know. You know who you are and you know your beliefs. You can still express yourself. You can still share what you know. Because I want to believe that it's either one or two of them listen to you. Or one or two of them rethink what you've said. They might not respond to you at that time. But they will know that you've spoken. Sometimes we younger people, we want to be encouraged by being approved. And sometimes those people we are waiting for to approve what we're saying are not even paying attention. And that discourages us not to be ourselves. So in this situation, I would say, 
Know what you know and know it well. You are there to solve a problem. Because they are not showing that interest, that doesn't mean that you don't have a point. You have a point. But keep sharing it until one of them will hear you. But don't be afraid. Don't be timid to express yourself. Build your confidence and keep on. Professor TPS. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> assume, assume you are a small child mm -hmm. and you are looking at the sky and the child is asking, what is sky? Right. I'm sure you will tell the child that it's a vast space. It has got colors. We change from white to blue to red. Look at it. Right. Answer is complete. No, it's not complete. Assume you are a space scientist. Probably what you will do is you will say the solar system is there, galaxy is there. Right. So the answer goes with the age of the person, the knowledge of the person. Now assume that I gave an answer like this to a young child. It is blue, red. The child says, I know all this. You tell me higher than this. Mm -hmm. I already read this in my classes. Now I am asking this question to a space scientist. Why are you talking about colors? You tell me the planetary systems. What I did, I underestimated the child. Mm -hmm. Correct. Or maybe I'm not a space scientist. I'm a poet. So what do I say? Yeah, sky is like an ocean, which is very vast. It is with no shore. The ocean has a shore, but sky doesn't have a shore. Right? It's like a painted ceiling. It's It houses so many other planets. It's holding the sun. It's not falling. So sky is so great. The space is so Fast and vast. It is not stable. It's moving fast and vast. Correct? Now your imagination goes. When I spoke about planet, when I spoke about the color, little imagination. When I say the sun is golden, like a robe, like a sphere, the moon is pearl, so you have golden and silver. I am giving you different different comparisons, right? I'm not just saying that, you know, sun is gold. Immediately the comes, silver is there. Moon is silver. It It is igniting. So the star comes. So it's all the matter in which how my imagination, my curiosity makes you to grow up. Even a small child can understand much, much better. I don't have to limit. <laughs> How could I give that answer only when you asked a question and your horizon has improved from a low level, higher level, higher level. So you should have the habit of asking questions and discussing without prejudice. Don't think, yes, am I doing something? No. But then what is required is yesterday, two days back, I had a seminar in which early childhood education was the topic. The organizing the anchoring person who is conducting the program immediately asked that lady to speak, repeat the title two times. Then I asked meaning of each of the word. No idea. The word is not understood. That means you have read it two, three times. You know this is the topic, but you did not read consciously. You don't even look at the meaning. So most important for anybody to ask question, to understand, look at the meaning of the words. Understand it carefully. So I'm sure there are a lot of people who speak. There are a lot of people who ask questions. But if you ask back, yeah, tell me what, how much you know about it so that I can take that level. Earlier I was telling you asked a small child. I did not ask the level. 
therefore i become foolish i gave an answer which was low level she said i already know this tell me so how do i do that generally when somebody ask if i don't know that person knew i'll ask them back tell me how much you know about it then i can tell you take you to the next level so before asking do some homework learn little bit be conscious what i am asking that is what always i keep saying your objective and scope how much should i tell what is your objective if two things are understood i think any program any question any answer becomes very clear objective and scope why am i talking can i finish all that i know about the topic in one hour no but i put only for one hour is my program i put this that's what i do. right so you should get from one level to another level to another level by gradual correct that is more essential don't expect everything happens at a stretch no it doesn't happen so may not be i may not get the full answer from somebody but he may have a different view on the topic listen to that so any question it is not full answer it is my reflection on the topic in my view i am telling that is not ultimate full answer so don't expect when you ask somebody how do they feel about my question no i am asking your reflection on that now tell me see that is why one answer was given by my sister that is her reflection my reflection is different everybody can reflect and i am sure when somebody is hearing they are also reflecting internally learning is reflecting good wonderful thank you so much sir thank you yeah thank you so much sir professor tps okay any more questions i just uh, seen ambassador agnes fortune cano from from ghana liberia usa wherever she is <laughs> at the moment thank you so much for joining us today and many many more please open your camera and then we will know that you are here i can see uh dr nekachi but we have we need to see your face and many many more any questions please? questions switch on the camera ask question first yes please oh you want okay question yes you have jamie. question okay. <laughs> i'm jamie matthew from india yes question? my question is See, um, uh, when you are a housewife and when you are uh, when you are hoping for something great, what was the force? What was the power uh, which was helping you for dreams? Actually, because when we are achieving something and when we are dreaming something, there's a time period. Till reach that time period, what was helping you? to live strong <laughs> thank you for the question uh jerry is it jerry or jamie jamie jamie, jamie thank you so much for uh that wonderful questions uh yes that is from my own experience so right what drives me when i know that i have a dream and presently i am not fulfilling that dream good question number 1 you need to hold on to your dream whatever you want to become you need to hold on number 2 you need to believe in yourself believe that you can achieve those dreams believe it in yourself strongly no matter the situation you find yourself now believe it strongly Number three, you need to have a quality decision of why you are still where you are, your position, maybe as housewife. You don't just fold your hands and complaining, lamenting, or other things. But you need to make decision that why you are still waiting for your dream to come alive, you need to do something. You need to take action. In my own case, I decided to use my own pocket money that my husband has given me to buy books. 
to buy motivational books, uh, teaching books, develop my English, do my communication skills, learn that. So you need to prepare. So that's the decision. That yes, I'm going there. I'm going that place. I'm going to fulfill that purpose. But where I am now, I might not be achieving it, but I'm preparing myself to where I'm going. So you need to make that decision. Number four, determination. The reason why determination is very, very powerful is because it's so easy for us to give up on our dreams. It's so easy to compromise. It's so easy to deny ourselves. It's so easy to give up. It's so easy for our focus to be broken. It's so easy to deny ourselves and also to you know, not, not to, to give up and to quit. So that is where determination will come. It's in every day's life. Every one of us face disappointment, disagreement, discouragement, and many more. Even distraction as well. Because sometimes you have a big dream, but because of your present situation, you might be thinking, how could I, an housewife, become? So you can even disbelieve yourself. So determination will make you to be stronger, to say, no matter what I'm going through, even if I'm doing cleaning job now, that is not my bus stop. It's just a place for me to go through. Because you have to go through before you get to. So you have to determine that nothing will stop you and you will achieve it. There's something we call timing. There is time for everything. There is time to build, time to process, time to prepare, time to study, time to achieve our goals. So you have to understand those times. Yes, you are the housewife now. Probably you are raising your kids. You need to enjoy where you are to where you are going. The children you are taking care of now are your gold. They are your golden gold. You are imparting yourself into them. So your time of being a nurse or a mother or housewife is not wasted. It's part of the journey. Remember, when I went for my first interview, this experience of housewife is what I shared <laughs> boldly, confidently in my interview as an experience. So hold on to your dream. Don't give up. Be determined. And whatever you are doing, enjoy what you are doing as a housewife, knowing that one day, one day, you will cross the boundary. You will come out of your comfort zone. The children you are even nursing today might be your best supporters and even your husband. Have I answered the question? So be encouraged and believe in yourself and walk through and prepare for your greatness. Because if you don't give up on that dream, it shall surely come to pass. Thank you. Any question? Have I answered you well? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Miss Jane? Me unmute and speak. Are you okay with that you, answer? Sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is, this is one problem which we have in India. We don't appreciate. Even if you give 20 minutes an answer, it'll just look like this. You finished? Okay, good. Wonderful. Now next question will come. We have to learn a, quite a lot from the etiquette of you know, appreciating. That is not there. I, I've, 
I flow into this many times because I am from that, right? So I'm learning, learning that from outside India. India is a place we don't, we take for granted, right? It's like a labor doing a job, giving a money. Yeah, good. Your job is over, I will go. Even after getting paid, we don't say thank you for the payment. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Dr. Queen Elizabeth, for a wonderful session. It was a very refreshing and en engaging session because when you shared your personal story, um, it made a very powerful impact within me. Uh, it made me reflect a lot on how um, how different people are and how their lives are built by their resilience. Thank you so much for this session. It created a very memorable impact within me. And thank you, doctor, for providing this opportunity uh, to attend the session. Um, and while attending the session, um, a lot of points, a lot of good pointers were provided um, in terms of how to build confidence while communicating um, and how can you change yourself as a person. Um, well, I am someone who, uh, I'm trying in many different ways to improve my con my communication skills. So how do you set up goals? Like how and what are the goals sh is a student supposed to set up to improve his or her communication skill? Mm, good question. Thank you so much, um, Nadine. Uh, I would like uh, Professor TPS to answer that question. And then I will tip up. Her name more. is Nandini. Nandini. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I'm, using, I'm using the wrong. I'm using the wrong glasses this morning, but that's fine. <laughs> Sorry about that, Nandini. Yeah. I'm not okay. I come from the south part of like I come. I come from Kerala, so hmm. Nandini Kerala. is a very, very remote name, like Keralaized. So much of name. And the good news is, I've got almost three of my co-workers from. Kerala, you said, and yeah. uh, um, they are inviting me to come and you know whenever they come to Indi come back to India, they want me to come with them. So I might be seeing you when they when they are ready. <laughs> okay, over to you, sir, Doctor TPS. Yeah, I think the best method to be more confident, communicative, expressive is networking. Mm. Mm. If I don't have a contact, communication is not different from networking. If you have communication, you are network good. But some people, why you should I? Is a question comes. Yeah, I am good. I am good in my subject. Why should I talk to somebody who is not in my topic? Mm. You know, you reserve yourself into a very specific area. So what happens is, if you do like that, your life will not have beyond the syllabus. You go in a narrow world. You don't know when something will require you. See, in India, the best top administrative process is through an examination called the civil service. Mm. IRS, IFS, all that. It is the same way in the London. Now, when they come to me, I'll ask them to go and make tea for me. They have to go to kitchen and first cook, learn cooking. Right? There is no connection between these two. It is to just to say, are you acceptable to a diversity? If you are not acceptable to diversity, what happens is you will get into the job, but you become unfit for the job. You understood? Because the job demands you to do many things. I was a mathematician. But the job what I did in space department is nothing to do with the mathematics. It is more of social science. See, if you are not a diverse person, if you are not ready to accept different things, you will find it difficult to live. You may pass examination, you will get a certificate, you are very good in communicating. No, not good enough. Networking. So I consider networking will give you a lot of exposure. 
communication is good you are a public speaker one subject good enough you can become famous but if you are not diversified in management also we keep saying you know how to do business do it and then reach up to the top but then after that what do you do you will come down there is a peak for all the business so what do they do they diverse they keep into different branches so they find most of the people die in their business because they are not able to get into diverse field i am very good probably one of the best topic which traditionally is there mathematics but if i don't branch out into computer science i cannot be a good mathematician a new subject came catch that one of my professor who taught me in mathematics was the head of the department of computer science later in part of his life how could he become computer science professor i am a mathematician now i am a professor of practices for management subject commerce trading business i branched out i branched out unless you do that branching out branching out happens only when you network connect to people i remember once i was traveling in a bus in kerala i am also from kerala from one place to another place i was sitting in a bus which is a transport public transport which is wrongly chosen actually there is a shortcut another bus could have taken me faster but then the person sitting beside me told yeah you lost some money because you took a wrong bus it goes in a different way but you will reach your destination but you will have to travel longer immediately asked i am so lucky that i am in the bus because of which i could meet you if i would have been the other bus i will not meet you so i am seeing somebody in my life who is so much concerned about my simple little bit of money mm. is a great opportunity so what i did i used that opportunity to talk to him and after some time his business was prawns business cultivating prawns so i started asking lot of questions see i lost maybe a um, little money but i learned a great business great farming great cultivation so in between he was asking me same similar farming because i was asking questions in such a fashion that i am very close to his knowledge i am very much eager to know how farming can be done then i told i am a space scientist he was looking at me a space scientist have got this is interest in my business yes why not why not you should have so diversify keep network use every opportunity if you are in a long queue standing waiting for something to happen talk to the person behind and the front of you talk to him to know what they are doing nothing wrong somebody may not answer you doesn't matter yeah if somebody doesn't want to talk to you say thank you bye but there are so many other people around you to whom you can talk right yeah so i don't i don't miss any opportunity to communicate to people saying that no i am a student this is my job nothing like that everyone is ready to talk to people i'm sure a young child will smile to somebody yeah. who is beside them mm. they have yeah. no reservation correct the yeah. earlier question sara was asking no or jemmy was asking what is consistently in us is we lost that eagerness to consistently pursue what i want in my life from childhood we had plenty god has given but we lost that mm. lost that if a child doesn't have courage to stand they will never learn how to stand is true correct so jemmy was asking how how could you have that that zeal in every one of us have that zeal but we we are more worried about what others will think what that fellow will think what this fellow will think you feel you have you are in a you are in a world where everybody is looking at you as if you are a great personality in the world and everybody will start making fun of us 
understand the world is too vast nobody has time to think about somebody else mm. so don't worry about it. i am the only person who is thinking more about me nobody else that's it correct so if you can think about you very seriously i am sure all that problems of pursuing what you want will happen so it is the intention i when i talk to young students also i don't see them as a student i will see them tomorrow he is going to a ceo he is going to be a judge exactly. he can be a no so i am seeing so many great people in each one of my classroom that's how i deal so if student comes and speak to me saying that i will ask them in my interview also for most of the people whom i was giving solutions to their problems i kept asking what is your age so they say i am 16 i said from now onwards you are not 16 you are 26 <laughs> behave as if you are 10 years older mm -hmm. so automatically you get that mature then i ask what do you feel now so i feel more matured more confident i know much things i can talk to anybody the confidence comes to you when you think you are more elderly yes correct say so today in my in my um, status i posted something on which i was in sri lanka and there is a rope the iron bar on which we have to walk i was coolly walking so i got at least 10 questions coming what is your age at this age you are able to do it so i keep saying up to 50 60 you add your age after 60 you reduce your age by 10 or 15 <laughs> when you are 20 think you are 30 but when you are 60 think, think you are 30 like i thought it i think you are 30 you become more confident that's <laughs> i like that i like that thank you so much that's amazing amazing but what happens is most of the people at the 20 also they think they are 10 they mm. want dependency with the father mother listen mm. to them and the father or mother when they are 70 60 they think they are 80 90 they say i can't do anything i am so old i can't mm. so both old and elderly both are bad in this world <laughs> this is the problem amazing amazing thank you so much sir professor tps that's exactly what i alone to learn from him as well he talks about networking that is the answer to our friend um uh, who has the question i think is he done done yes networking is very important accepting accepting diversity and also uh, to add to it adaptation you need to adapt to any situation around you adapt to changes and also collaboration as professor have said it use every opportunity to speak sometimes we are too shy but when we break free from being afraid to speak then you will speak one of my mentor also we say something like when you open your mouth <laughs> when you learn the communication skills and you open your mouth the world is ready to listen and once you start i remember when i went for one training on public speaking and i involved in the global women a club and the leader of that uh, club was saying that when you give a woman a microphone to speak she can speak a whole day so that was the very first day i started speaking publicly <laughs> because uh, and the more you now consist like a professor have said when you open your mouth and you start speaking and you consistently seeking for opportunity to speak by networking by connecting by collaborating you will see that even your level of communication will rise and your level of confidence will be will be at another level so i want to say thank you so much i hope you've uh, appreciate you've learned from the answer from my mentor and let I me had, i had i had a professor who was telling you don't know music speak about music you don't know music speak, speak. about music oh, wow <laughs> and somebody Amen. who knows music will come and tell you it's not correct it's not correct <laughs> then ask him what is music <laughs> then he will teach you <laughs> amazing 
<laughs> and as a speaker, the spells, I mean, for the past three years as a speaker, people will just randomly send me the topic. And I'm thinking, I don't know anything about this topic, but I will challenge it by studying about the topic. <laughs> Because I don't want them to see that I don't know about the topic. So I have to learn. That is why we keep learning in respect of profession, in respect of uh, this, uh, the specialties we find ourselves, you know, and other things. You keep learning. So I've, I end up learning every, every topic. <laughs> the real me has a question. You tell your name, the right name. Yes. Real me C31. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hello, ma'am. My name is Tursan Gayal from India. Hello. Can Hello. you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Uh, how can we express uh, what uh, uh, which is in our, in our brain to uh, our mouth? Hello, ma'am. Yes, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah. How do you how do you make Express. your thoughts into sentences, paraphrase, push it into the language? It doesn't happen yes, for most yeah. of the people. Hmm. Sir, in a more meaningful and uh, mature way. The mature yeah, that talk. is what I'm saying, paraphrasing. Yeah. Putting it into the best style is called paraphrasing. How do hmm. I put my thoughts, paraphrase it well? Yeah. That's the answer. Yes, you know, when you gain better understanding of what you've been taught, then the only way to show to people that you really understand that is to break it down. I don't know that big uh, prof uh, professor TVS. I don't know the big grammar you just said about paraphrasing. <laughs> but yeah. to me, it's break it down for others to understand it and express it the way you understand it. Yeah. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, I keep saying, uh, yeah. write it down. Yeah. In paper. Mm -hmm. When you write it, I'm sure if you should have written it down, the question. Yeah. You would have just read it and it would have been more clear. Look, you need to write it down. Right. All that what uh, my sister spoke, I've got a huge note here. So mm -hmm. I keep writing onto my mobile. Okay. And sometime I put my record on no record on so that the word the all that what spoken is converted into english and made automatic notes right so you have many facilities today while listening you can automatically get that converted to a note for it. Hmm. that's what is required thank you i hope that answer your question Rime? yes ma'am Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I want to also invite Ambassador Agnes. I think he has she has a question for <laughs> Ross from Ghana, from Liberia. She happens to be the ambassador at large for uh, Liberia. So, um, and she's having uh, she's very very busy having meetings with government in Liberia. So she has a question for us today. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. The topic today was very interesting because I experienced it, building self-confidence. When I got a call from the president's office last week, asked me to be in a meeting with some investors from Russia in the Liberian embassy. I was like, oh, God, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> and the person said, you had an interview with the president. You passed the interview. You spoke to him. You sat with him. I said, no, but it's personal. I know him. I don't know this group that's coming in. And I was so nervous. I was, I didn't know what to say. And I kept telling myself, yes, you can. Yes, you can. When I got there, I just took a deep breath. Count one to 10. That was my major play here. Everybody introduced themselves. I introduced myself. I was still not sure what I'm going to say, but as the time I listened, like Dr. Lucas said, listen, I listened to the opening statement and I've heard everybody's point of view. And all of a sudden it just started flowing. I, I fell right in because 
I felt like, oh my God, all these people are so big dignitary, they are so advanced. I'm, who am I? I don't fit here. But the self-confidence, I just have to make myself comfortable and be able to open my mouth when I speak and look them dead in the eye and, and smile. And even if I don't know what I'm saying, I sound so confident in myself. So I really, the topic today really, really helped me take me to the next level because you never know everything and you will be put in a position like five minutes or 30 minutes in my call you and said, you have to go to a meeting and speak on our on the country's behalf. So I have to do a lot of reading and I was the person that never liked to read, but being part of YYC taught me how to read, how to do a lot of research before you go to the front you must know what you're talking about. You must be very confident when you open your mouth. You might get attention. So people might say, oh, she has something to say. It's very important to capture the attention of these people and to keep it all the way to the end. So this topic really helped me today because I was really in a nervous wreck last week, but I passed. I think I gave myself an A, but <laughs> this topic was great. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucas and Dr. TPS. I really enjoyed. And you calling me, I was shocked. I'm like, oh, this is one of my favorite. I have to get on. I know I'm lazy on Saturdays, but this I needed to hear. It was a good training, a real thing for me to open my mind more. You know, we have to have an open mind, broadened mind, and be able to listen. Listening is the key. Because sometimes you go into meetings, you don't know what they're going to say. So you just listen to what angle they're coming from. So you can be able to fit in. Because this has been in the politics arena. I'm always in the NGO arena. It's easy for me to talk to kids. Easy for me to, you know, communicate with the children. But now I'm dealing with big level people. So I have to fit in. And I need to be more of these classes. I need to uh, reconnect with people. That would teach me, you know, like my mom said, table etiquette, how to eat at the table. So this these classes really help you prepare you for the future. And I really appreciate this today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ambassador Thank Agnes Fortune. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I like the way mm -hmm. you said it, you express it, because active listening is very, very important. Yes. It also prepares you, especially if you are in the midst of the government. It prepares you mm -hmm. to want to know because you don't want to say something out of the out of the uh, out of the blue. You know, you want yeah. to ram with them. And there's the the magic way is the way you've started by listening to them first. While you are listening, then the ideas that you are going to share will come in. And I think this also will help Ambassador Sarah also with our questions, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you listen first, learn. That is why I always ask people, don't just join the conference or webinar to speak. Join to learn from others and listen attentively with a listening and understanding. You know, it's very important because sometimes I've been to some conferences and what the theme of the conference is totally, I mean, what people are saying, some few, not all, what they were talking about is out of the content. I mean, the theme of the conference. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Dr. TPS has also experienced that because most, most of us, uh, we've been to several platforms to speak. Well, you know, it, it, it's, it's just down to preparation and also mm -hmm. willingness to learn from others. If you can be willing to learn from others, then you can build your confidence and also know what to say at the right time. I remember when I was very young, the only thing I liked to do is to sit in front of the older ones. I mean, the elders sit in front of them, even if they want me to do something with their ears or their feet, I'm listening to them. I'm learning from their wisdom. And, and I think that is very important. 
listening skills is coming out of the system, but we need to bring it back. People are so anxious. People are so uh, busy. You know, they don't want to, but that's the only way we need to learn from one another. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Ambassador Agnes Fortune, the ambassador at large for Liberia. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for, for, I mean, if you can say that our webinar today is very useful, then we, we also, we should be learning a lot because you can see an ambassador is telling us that our webinar is helpful. So what about <laughs> you, student? What are you going to say? <laughs> ah, it's an opportunity. Even coming here is an opportunity to network. I don't know some of you before. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm seeing all your smiling faces, especially those that open their camera. It's part of networking. I'm knowing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, just now, just now I was seeing the uh, message of Agnes and then I missed it somehow, couldn't answer. So I just answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> it just was continuously traveling. Sometimes some message misses. It's yeah. almost two weeks back, you asked some details from me, so I couldn't send it. Okay. So I just send it now. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> so it's good. And thank you for, for uh, connecting with my mentor. Um, well, uh, Ambassador Agnes, we always say I'm a mentor, uh, which I, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, think, yeah. I think we have done some programs on agriculture related sometime back, yes. So that yes. time yes. Agnes was yes. there, yes, she yes. was there, then. yes. So I'm glad that you connect with the um, it's good to look for where uh, Ambassador Elizabeth is. Uh, eating his uh, salad and also to come and eat salad with me. So if you find me resourceful, then you will be looking for more to gain from my my mentor. So thank you so much, Agnes, Adil, for connecting Adil with me. something to say? Consistently, he was there all the time. Okay, and smiling. No, and I like that. And mute him. Yeah, I was listening the the whole time, and it was really nice to have this moment with all these people, and it helped me to reflect on my conversation skills and how I can express myself in ways that I could have never been before. From all these points I learned from the people I met here. It was really a nice yes. conversation I had. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Where about are you? I'd like to know you more. Where about are you in India? Are you from India? Yeah, I'm from India, Kerala, actually. <gasps> So I've got more friends now from Kadla. I didn't even yeah. know my professor is from Kadla. So I am my, also from Kerala. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. So that means uh, because Jimmy is from Kerala, but it, we live in different places. Jimmy lives in Delhi. Okay. I live in uh, Hyderabad. But originally from that. Kerala. Originally from Kerala. Okay. 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 But okay. Adil is living in which part of Kerala, Adil? I'm from Malappuram. Malapur, yeah, that yeah. is central part of Kerala. Yeah. So I was director for one of the university there under the university grants commission. Oh. I was director in that district. There is a university. Government was it the Calicut University? Calicut University. I was director for academic staff college. Teaching university oh. professor in the whole India was my job. Oh, that amazing. was almost 15, 15, 16 years back. Amazing. Oh. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You see, so this our platform is not only just coming to learn, it's also a platform of connecting. You see, so, and it is very good. This is a networking we are doing over here, you know, and then this platform, and yes, you can, it's a national platform. We don't hold anybody, you know. That is why when people say, who are your workers? Or, you know, the people that work with you, 
they have worked with me. I always tell them only one person and it's only my PA. But we have a bigger team because most of the members, they are leaders. They have their own organizations. But whenever we have a big conference, they are willing to come and serve during that conference. And that is the uniqueness of Yes You Can International. We don't need crowd to really work, but we need able leaders to come together, we learn together, we grow together and impact lives. So over to you, sir. What other things or oh, any questions from anybody? <laughs> I think so. We will call it a day. Yeah. Good enough. We have a lot of comments on the chat box. Probably we'll pick it up and post it under the yes, recorded yes. version when it comes on YouTube. Okay. And uh, we will get connected. We will try to make some uh, meaningful outputs, some good contacts. Thank you so much. So on behalf of myself and my yeah. family, and yes, you can international. I want to say thank you, sir, Professor Dr. TPS, for giving me the chance to come and express my wisdom and knowledge and inspiration on this platform. I do not take it for granted. And I want to say thank you, sir, for trusting me to share my little words of wisdom. I also want to express my gratitude to all our great leaders. I know some of you are students, some of you are teachers and leaders in your own locality. But I want to express my gratitude for giving me your audience, for me to speak and for you to listen with better understanding. I want to say I do not take this time for granted at all. This platform is rich and great, but for me to be allowed to come and speak, I do not take it for granted. I want to say, sir, thank you so much for trusting your mentee to come and work with you on this platform. I also want to say thank you to my members of YYCI, even though I couldn't give them the information on time, but they still make it a point to join us today because I want to believe that they are also learning from different platforms. So Honorable Dr. Ofuru, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Ambassador Agnes, thank you for joining us. And Ambassador Sarah, thank you for joining us. And finally, I want to say thank you to all that have listened to me today, especially from India. I don't know you personally, you don't know me personally, but through the influence and the and the connection with uh, Professor TPS, you were able to join this platform today to listen to the person you have never met before. I do not take your time for granted. We've spent two and a half hours this, and you listen attentively. I wanna say thank you so much. I appreciate it from the depth of my heart. Over to you, sir. Thank you. I'm sure it was so enriching. I guess all of you will learn. We agree. And then unmute again and then say, yes. You can. You can. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, you let's can. say it together. You see, yeah. Professor said, unmute, because unmute, unmute, that is unmute, the unmute, way you I would like you to first of all say, yes, I can. Yes, yes I, can. I can. Yes, yes I, can. I can. Yes, I can. I can. And then the finally, <laughs> you need to say to somebody else, yes, you can. You can. Yes, you yes, can. You can. <laughs> you can. <laughs> so great. You, Thank you so Thank much. You program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great inspiration for many people across the globe. And I'll tell you, too busy, super busy person. Right? Still, when joins for a program, you can see cool, calm, meticulously talk on, keep on talking on different topics. I think we'll have more connections. You can look at uh, Yes, You Can International on internet. 
connect to the website subscribe listen to lectures so many transformation relationship master classes and when you are good when you know how to communicate when you are good i'm sure you will also become part of the platform to speak international okay, okay. yes you. you can thank you yes <laughs> Yes, you can. Big salute. Yes, sir. Big salute yes, sir. From yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you right, so sir. much. So keep uh, you can keep updating. Yes. Keep looking at programs around. Let us all learn together, grow together. Sahana vavatu, sahana bhunaktu, sahaviryam karava vahai tejasvina vadi damastu ma vidyusha vahai. Let us sit together, eat together, learn together. No enmity between us. Let us all grow together. That's the meaning of this chanting, which is a normal chanting on all our rituals. Sahana vavatu, sahana bhunaktu, sahaviryam karava vahai, tejasvina vadi tamastu ma vidyusha vahai. Let us not have any enmity and let us live together, pray together, eat together, learn together. So thank you so much thank for you. hosting this program and then conducting it. I was not conducting, actually. My sister was <laughs> conducting it so well. Thank you. So thank you. Thank I you, need sir. I need yes. this. Thank you. This at times I need this. Yeah. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Sarah. Thank you, yes. Agnes. Thank so you, you can YBC. you can you can uh, you have the power to end the program, sir. You can yes. end the program. Okay. So bye bye. Bye bye, sir. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you.